What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Sunless Seas of Mariner. My name is Splattercat. Welcome. Welcome on back, delicious viewer. We don't really have a whole lot of stuff to do right now. We're looking pretty good, although I should probably upgrade my gun. I think there's a... What do we have on our ship right now? A deck gun. So that's a lead beater and stain rod mark two. I know that there's one that you're supposed to buy like right at the beginning of the game because it's just like flat out a better weapon. And it's super cheap as I recall. That one's pretty good. The stagger amount, warm up time, four seconds. Yeah, we could definitely go in on something like the winnower. Oh, it's a torpedo attack. Okay, well that requires ammunition, and I don't want to play around with that noise. Instead, we've got... I mean, the flensing cannon might work. Permits flensing attacks. That's kind of cool. I don't know what a flensing is, but it sounds like it's probably fun and cool to do. We've also got a stain rod sea worm, but it requires torpedo components once again. And so that really comes down to whether you want to spend tons of money on torpedo com They're actually not that expensive, but I don't know if they take up hold space. Oh, they don't. Hooray, torpedo components. They don't take up hold space. They don't take up hold space. So we needed a deck weapon. We got the reproach, which does four more damage than what we have. Deck weapon. Where are you? Deck weapon. There we go. The denunciation for 500 does 15 damage. That would almost double our damage right there. If it was something that we wanted to take after. Aft weapons are also super sexy and I'd be happy about grabbing those. Let's maybe go a bit more fuel because we're going to be out at sea for a little while. And then we will fill up the remainder with supplies possibly. I don't think I'm carrying too many other things with me right now that are taking up space. Right? No? I was going to say, it looks more or less like I don't have anything on deck. So what's eating up all my space right now? Oh, I've got the unstamped crate of souls. Yeah, that's an issue. I'm carrying around a bunch of people's immortal souls right now. Because that's just the sort of filthy trafficker that I am. But like, yeah, well, your souls are now mine. My recommendation would be saving your money. It's a good idea to get yourself into a better ship as soon as possible. Preferably one that has two guns. One gun that's good at flensing would be fantastic. That would actually be the best part, is if you could get a gun that can flense, and then a gun that can fire normally. However, torpedo attacks, as I recall, are fairly decent as well. We've got lots of side quests that we need to do right now. We've got some for the Irrepressible Cannoneer. I think his takes place in Hell. Pretty sure his takes place over here at Hunter's Keep, and then goes out to, like, one of the weird places. Hers, I don't think I've ever actually done, and his I can't recall, but I think I've made a couple of steps in his. But yeah, the quests are not that bad. The quests are mostly time and like they're really, really time intensive because they require you to go from like point A to point B just to grab something real quick and then come back. Now let's see here. Are they taking visitors? I will reconnoiter the island. And then we got a port report once again. I would also say visiting the cellar is not an option right now. We've got news. Anybody want to hang out? Hooray, they want to hang out. Now then. Let's go with soft voice, watchful, and unpredictable. I don't rarely do anybody other than Lucy because you get supplies from Lucy. Let's go with Phoebe. What happens? Phoebe has a story to tell. Two lovers parted by water and of a raven that carried messages of a fragment of the moon. She beats time on the table as she speaks as if to a song only she can hear. The effect is hypnotic. Your attention drifts out to the skylight of the dining room to the false stars glittering in the roof of the cavern. You drift like a puffball spore. The Unterzee shimmers below. Islands lie like mineral specimens on black velvet. Ships bob like wood chips beneath the islands. Vast spined things pulse in the depths. There is a scent like the scent before a storm. The storm came, says Phoebe quietly. Everything changed. Somewhere in here you finished the last course. The scowling maid reluctantly serves cheese and bath all of her biscuits. We've lost five terror. We've lost three hunger. We've gained a supply. We've got a memory of distant shores. Which is not so bad. I mean, that's not t a terrible outcome by comparison to what you could have gotten. I mean, all of them seem to be fairly uniform. I know that, like, back in the day, people used to always pick this cheery sister just because it was simpler that way, and you got bonuses and whatnot. But maybe they changed those around to make them a little bit more... make them a little bit more fair, I guess. 
Hopefully we don't run into any pirates or anything on our way up here. I think we have to go to Wither. We have to go to somewhere to get our strategic information. I don't know if we have... How much strategic information do we have right now? We have none, and so we probably want to get on top of that before we go too much further into the game. The Lamentable Relics aren't really worth anything. I think you can trade Lamentable Relics for something. But... I can't recall what. It was something good. Like, you need Lamentable Relics. I remember because I sold all my Lamentable Relics to the museum down there. And then I ended up needing like a bunch of them for something, and then I just felt really, really dumb about it. Which is the case in this game. You're almost always going to run into that situation where you sell whatever the useful thing is that you had. And then, because you always need echoes in this game, you're really echo starved like half the time. And then you'll reach a point where your ship's so strong that you can just go out and farm monsters for like a thousand echoes apiece, and then it just doesn't matter anymore. But, you're so echo starved that obviously like what people do in the early game is they'll do anything to make more money. And so they tend to just, like, use up all their resources trying to get more cash. Let's get some... Let's see. 12 supplies are replaced with 12 tomb colonists. And they need to be taken to three destinations. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to trade my... I need more supplies than that. That's going to eat up all my supplies. We'll get our port report, and then from there, Inventor Bite, in Vendor Bite will explore. A little trapel stands alone. You poke your head through the door. The walls are a deep red, just this side of scarlet. A ruby-tinted window at the back glows with a steady light. An electric lamp behind the glass? Rare and expensive, but this is no gaslight. No one is here, and yet you have the sensation that only a moment ago someone must have been. We can leave. We can make an offering if we've got our rights, or we can search the place with a very modest challenge. We succeeded. There is an altar, a block of basalt, and there are pews, a pulpit. No Bibles, no hymnals. The stained glass window is the red of the cochineal. An inscription on the lintel of the door reads, For I was hungered, or I was unhungered, and you gave me meat, and that is all. The crew are eager to leave, and no one looks back. Well then, I'm pretty sure you can give into vampirism or something like that as you go further and further into the game. That's what the menace, the, the menace like unaccountably peckish or whatever that grows. You get hungrier and hungrier until you start eating people, as I recall. It's something along those lines. I, I think I ran it down one time when the game first came out, but once again, it's been a long ass time and I can't recall. My memory is not what it used to be. The older I get, the worse my memory gets. It's the worst. Where was this final one going? Oh, he was going to Avid Horizon. That's what it was. Okay, so we'll do a loop like this. We'll head... Oh, man. Abbott Horizon's way the hell over there, though. Shit. You might have to eat one of my secrets. I don't know if we're going to make it out there, especially if we're being pragmatic and trying to go places like over here where we can get all the... Oh, man. Come on. Get me out of the storm. I don't want to be stuck in the storm. No. Yeah, dang, dang it, you too punk-ass light making fun of me because I'm going all slow. Damn it. I feel like I always get stuck in storms in this game. I try to go around or like try to choose like a pragmatic path and I it never works out for me. There we go. We're out of the storm. Should be able to get back up to normal speed. A new engine would be nice. Wouldn't it be nice to get an engine? Wouldn't it be nice to cruise all day? Even though there's no day underground. I suppose there's no day available. You ever like, so right now in my life, there's two factions vying for an opinion, and it's looking like one of them is going to win. Ooh, a vast eye has begun. It knows you and you cannot evade its gaze. Again and again you are alone on the wide black Z. The eye is aware. The nightmare will come upon you from time to time, inspiring terror. Gain restful nights at your lodgings to resist it. If you defeat it, you may gain a secret. Hooray! Nightmares of the eye! But anyways, one faction appears to be winning. Faction is kind of a glorious term for the whole thing. Basically, it's just, it is what it is. Got our port report. We've got a riddling contract. Oh, yeah, we needed that for the Admiralty. It's going to cost me 25 fragments, though, which is not really that much, so it's fine. We could take shore leave and wither if we wanted to. Let's explore the town. Let's see what we find here. A contest of riddles. Oh, we got that one again. Okay. I don't have time to do the same event over and over again for... Very, very little gain. I see no point in it. Let's continue outwards. Oh, shit. Right when I decided to shift in my chair, damn it. 
I was trying to get comfortable because my tushy was in a spot where I didn't like it. I was sitting and the pillow was kind of upraised and it was like lifting one of my cheeks as though lifting like a bed skirt a little bit. And it was just like not acceptable. I didn't like it at all. And so after sitting like that for the last couple of minutes, I was like, I fear for my anus and decided I was going to rearrange real fast. And that's right when this lifeberg tried to jump me. And you can't convince me that he didn't plan that. He was like, I will wait until his anus is inconvenienced. Then we shall fight. All right, give me my port report here. I don't think we're doing anything on Codex at the moment. A damp request. That's if we got a submarine, though, which, per usual, we don't have. I think we'll get it soon. I didn't mean for it to take this long to get one. But it appears as though you need financial resources or something to get a submarine. So, it is what it is. I think we've already discovered whatever that is because I see a lantern right there. We'll head east. We actually never found Port Palmerston either, I don't think. Which is weird because it should be up here or over here. Let's send out the bats. I thought we had Palmerston. That's fine. There can be something underwater some distance to the east. What I'm concerned with, the Ragged Crow is to the east. That's just a big rock thing as far as I know. Yeah, and there's these big moth things over here. Gotta watch out for those too. Basically everything in the early game is dangerous to you and you don't want to mess with it if you can help it. So we got the Ragged Crow, that'll release some of the stuff that we lost while out here. It would be my sincerest hope that he's not on me. Go ahead and kill the lamp. Oh no. We've hit a storm. I think the fastest way to cut is just to go this way. And now remember kids, we learned that cutting in line is not okay. Cutting is cue as those uh, cutting in cue, as those of you across the pond say. However, this is one of those cases where cutting is perfectly fine. Come on, get me out of this goddamn storm. There we go. Perfect. There are no islands within the Z-Bats range. That leads me to think it must be further east, like past the Chapel of Lights. I've never seen it spawn that far out to the east, but I'll be damned if I'm not going to make a play for it right now, because I'm not getting knifed by going back to London without dropping off my cargo. I will spend extra money to ensure I don't get knifed. Let's continue sending out the bat, just in case. Bring me the bat! I don't see anything. It's possible that Port Palmerston... Port Palmerston in the original version of the game was always in the top part of the map. It's possible that it's like right here, right before you get to whatever that big corner place is with the statues or whatever. But... Teneb is to the northeast. Where is my port, though? I want my port at Frostfound. And then once we take care of this, we'll swing up to the north around to Avid Horizon. And that will be that. It shouldn't be too difficult. My assumption is that they give you at least like 30 days for each step of this. I'll probably go down this way and then I'll cut up the eastern coast so that we unlock the other spot and get some more fragments too. Page's score is 34, so glean another 93 fragments. Page is not a terrible thing to take as a main stat outside of irons. If you take pages as a main stat, you do get more fragments. I forgot about that bonus, which means you get secrets faster. Frost found. We'll get a port report. We will take tea. That'll give us supplies, fuel, and we'll lose 10 terror, which is great because we cannot operate with high terror. Keeping it down as low as possible is always my modus operandi that I try to keep in high supply as I try not to die. Back there, there was a moth. It's kind of like a fly, but with giant wings and fangs with depry. Away from me, moth. I shout and I cry. And then I snuck away because I am sly. It's not hard. Rhyming things is easy. It's once you gotta like put it to some kind of rhythm that it gets worse. Did we just discover Bright? We must have. Ugh, another storm. I'm trying to mess with a storm right now. 
We'll go to Chapel of Lights, and then we'll kind of see how this goes. I can't use the speedy boost on my engine because I don't have enough crew. If I end up losing, like, two or three crew, we're going to have major, major issues, and we're going to travel very, very slowly. And you have, like, this rough chance of just being, like, marooned out here and dying, and it's just like, eh, I don't want to do that right now. Send out the bat just in case. There are no islands here. Okay. It's strange that we haven't found Palmerston yet, though. Were I to hazard a guess where it might be at, I would have said out this way before the Chapel of Light somewhere, but it could be further out to the east. We'll give it a try. I think I'll try to fill up my hunger over here, though. Ah, the sea is bright as milk, false stars above, or black on a pitchy bed. Something is watching you, its gaze unfolds from your boat. You're transparent as glass. Turn the helm and free, or we can flee the nightmare across the milk-bright sea. Reduces its strength. If it gets to zero, it fades entirely. Cool. So there it is. The sea churns in your wake. You pull away from the eye to the shallower waters of waking, but a terror still clings. Hooray, my heart's challenge. Oh, good. My nightmare is passed. That's good, isn't it? You can always get another nightmare. It's not a big deal. There's like a set of them, and they get worse and worse and worse as time goes on. And then the game just presumes that you've been leveling up your hearts and all that kind of stuff. Chapel of Lights. You have things that are really, really well. Chapel of Lights. Is that Mount Doom or whatever it's called? I forget what that thing's called. It's Mount something, rather. Go ahead. We'll gather intelligence first. We'll eat of the chapel's bounty and lose 42 hunger. Yeah, that's the thing where you can get the heart of the mountain from it or whatever. It's essentially like a giant roving mountain. Yeah, a mountain nomad. I don't think he's really capable of anything. And if we keep dark, we should be able to duck him. But I need to go to Abbot Horizon, which requires me to go around him, which is a bit of a hassle. There we go. Perfect. To Abbot Horizon. I'm glad that they added a new class. Like, that's the, really kind of the difference between some developers and others. Is like Some developers will give you new content to the base game in inclusion with all the new stuff that they've added. Other people will only add on to the end. I'm glad that they added a bunch of new stuff to like the main part of the game because it makes it fun. You've got to replay back through to get your submarine and it's nice to have like new events and things like that that you can fiddle with. We're so close. Please Mr. Sex, please. Be merciful. As soon as you dock, Mr. Sax lumbers ashore. It has been preparing for this. Plunging a hand into its cloak, it removes a handful of ammonia-scented snow. It places it on the ground and adds another on top. Into this one, it presses the teeth and the hair from the small box. Potential. Substance. Only one thing needs to be added as in the tales of the Gnomon. The Crimson Beast of Winter waits impatiently for you to provide it. can use my blood or I can use the blood in here, but we don't know that the blood in here is from, like, good guys. It might be from one of the other lords of the bazaar who's trying to mess with him. I'm gonna give my blood. You nick your hand with a blade and hold it above the frozen mound. A drop wells up and falls, and more follow. They fizz in the lacquer, which softens and melts into a puddle of snow. A puddle from which a hand emerges. Then a head. Then another head. This hand, sorry, stretching as it clambers up from nowhere. The shape of a child, its skin glistening, white snow rippled with red. You reach out a hand, the child grips it with a chill of frostbite. Its legs finally form the last of the lacquer and it falls to its new knees, shivering and looking around in confusion. One of your zailers hurries over with a warm blanket. Another smacks his idiot head. Mr. Sax stares down at the creature which shivers and hugs itself. Inadequate, Sax says, again. Striding to the sealed gate, it rests a gloved hand against it, basking in the chill. The whisper of a place too cold for gods. Refreshing. Dispose of the mongrel as you see fit. Your service is done. Be gone before I change my mind. Okay, well, we've got the snow child. 
It cowers from the crimson beast, its snow still settling. He looks up at you, frightened and shivering for reasons that have nothing to do with the cold. Your blood streaks through its ice. Are you, uh, taking me home now? You want to go home? London? Yeah, London. I, I wanted to play on the rooftops, but it made Mother cry. She cries a lot, but she says it's not my fault. She'll be worried. Wait, you're not a devil, are you? Mother says to watch out for devils. He gives you a suspicious sniff. No, no eggy smell. You can take me back, right? I've always wanted to go zailing. The snow child looks up at you. It won't take up much room. It could do with a name, though, at least until it remembers it used to have one. Um. I'll name him. Oh, I don't know. Elliot sounds good. I'm classical. He preens. That's a great name. You reach out to take its cold hand in yours, leaving the crimson beast behind. He's kind of creepy, though. Like, can we all admit he's a little creepy? You heard a story. The ice by the gate's edge. There was a whisper about a hunting quest. The final revenge. Yes. Yes, this is what the rumors meant. A hunter frozen in the ice, hands contorted to claws, mouths agape. With her left hand, she plucked her own eye from the socket, and it lies very close to the surface of the ice. The stories are true. There's a dark virtue in that eye. Take it, then. But perhaps it should be put in a jar. You should be put in a jar. Oh. That one cost me. Let's look into the stars again. Gain 10 terror and a fragment, just like last time. I think something good's if you it, something like good can happen there, I think, when you stare into it. Now, this is one of the colors that we need to take back for the curator. The guy that gave us the quest that was like a mummy or whatever. The eye is one of the colors. The darkness of the eye is the absence of all color. And so you gotta take that to him and he'll give you... I think he gives you like a splendiferous treasure or something like that. He gives you something that's worth a lot of money. If I remember right. Like one of those things that's like hell of value inside the... Con it's kind of like a searing enigma. It's really, really valuable inside the context of the game. And you don't want to give it up for just money because later on there will be like a really hard event. And if you don't have one, you won't be able to complete it. Port Palmerston's got to be around here somewhere. I'm just going to keep sending the bat out to the front, I think, and seeing if he comes up with anything. There we go, some distance to the southeast. Perfecto! We needed this place, otherwise we were going to be in deep dookie shits. And dookie shits are so much worse than just normal shits or doogies. When you combine them, it's like a ice cream sandwich of just, like, foul... I don't know... Icker. Foul droppings, things left behind, all that kind of stuff. A Faustic Corsair. Kill the lights. We can't take him, I don't think. If we came up behind him, we might be able to get him, but I'd rather not play with him right now. Well, he's on to us, but I think he'll leave us alone because we're so close to port. In Port Palmerston. Brimstone. Always brimstone. Southern lights glow green at the jetty's edge. Behind the port buildings, the island is knee-deep in ash. There are ruins here and there, and houses destroyed by fire. Far above, the mountaintop flickers red just for an instant. Let's... Oh, we've got a new officer here, the Merciless Modest. But you've got to have five bales of parabola linen. Deliver the smuggled souls... A hooded figure with a lantern awaits at the far end of the quay. Key, whatever, a hurried exchange. You give the hooded shape a sign of recognition. It hisses the reply you expected. You hand over the crate and receive a chitty marked with the thief sign. Hooray, a chitty. An itty bitty chitty. Let's maybe go to the port folk about the Brimstone Convention. Oh, they don't do us any harm. They stay up there and we stay down here. If hell's fighting itself, that's good for us all, ain't it? You want to explore the island? Let's do it. Tangles a thorn scrub. Climb the rocky slopes of the volcano. At the heart of a salty little bog, you come upon a pulsing mound of blemigans. They are rich dark purple like viscera, perhaps, or blackberries. They chitter as they swarm. The sound is like pebbles on a beach. Be careful, a single blemigan is a nuisance, a hundred, or a calamity. Fight them! Armed sailors settle behind a rise in the ground at the bog's edge. At the signal, they open fire into the purple mass. 
Dozens of Blemigans fall, but hundreds remain. They seethe across the bog, leaping across black gaps of standing water, maws agape. But you direct your crew's fire with calm and precision, and only a few reach the line. Your crew methodically smash them with rifle stocks and advance with caution towards the bog. The Blemigans which remain to defend the mound are no match for your weaponry, and you take the mound without a single fatality, and they die, chittering nonsense. Chittering curses. Of course, you're now possessed of a mound of mud. You find nothing of value, although Blemigans apparently collected little clay tablets marked with indecipherable chicken scratchings. Your quartermaster, however, points out that the Blemigan bodies can be rendered into purple dye, which will fetch a good price almost anywhere. So, 30 bucks. Hooray. You dig amongst the ruins. But that's about it for right now. I think we'll probably continue to the east as far as the map will allow us because we've still got plenty of fuel. We've still got more than enough supplies, and so I think this would be a really, really good opportunity for us to clear out some of the black spaces on our map, make a little bit more money, and then after that, we'll head back to London, we'll head south, and then finally, we will get our submarine. Okay? Sound like a plan to you? We're out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. I will end this episode when next we put into port, I think, which has got to be around here somewhere. My apologies about that. But yeah, we'll put in a port right here, and then once we're into port, we'll probably be all right. I think, I forget what this is called. It's called something, I think it's Irum or something like that. Yeah, Irum. That's what it was. Irum, I forget what it is about Irum. There's such, there's something special about this place. Like it has some function in like the lore and mythos of the world. Like it does something. Just can't recall what. None have ever spoken truthfully of this place. Irum, the pillared city, she will rise from the sea in ice like dawn. She will be garlanded with red and decked with gold. The seventh serpent will watch you longingly from its high pedestal. You will always arrive as a stranger, but when you leave, some part of you remains. If we have a sack of dark drop coffee, we could use this to rest up. We'll get a port report, though. When you sit down to write the report, you will recall that it was written already. Who wrote it? The report records that it was already written when it was found, and who found it? The report describes another report which will indicate the name of the finder. Whereas the other report, there's a footnote which describes when you will record its location. But when will that be? When all is well, and all manner of thing is well. My name is Splattercat. See y'all later. Thanks for stopping on in. Hi do everybody.